Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1220 Calculus 2 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'm your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. This video is the first video of lecture 39. Uh, we're getting to the tail end of our lecture series for Calculus 2. Uh, and in the previous uh, lecture, we had introduced the notion of the integral test and used that to show that series were convergent or divergent or such. Uh, in this lecture 39, we're going to introduce two more uh, convergence tests. Uh, the first one, which we'll talk about in this video, is known as the comparison test. Now, if you've been part of this series for a while, then the, word com the name, the comparison test, might actually resonate with you. We did something strikingly similar with, the, with, with integrals, with improper integrals in which given the discussion we had with the integral test last time, we see that series and improper integrals are actually deeply connected with each other. And the same reasoning behind the comparison test for integrals actually gives us the, the comparison test for series. So we have two sequences in question here. We have uh, A sub n and B sub n. Now, what we know about these sequences is that we're going to assume that a is bigger than b and they both need to be positive so they're both above the x-axis the, the sequence is always created and equal to zero so we have something like the following if we have our x-axis like so and if you take the first sequence um, it's above you know and in order for this thing to converge it's going to have to go towards zero and then we have a second one which maybe in each instance is smaller than the, the above one, right? And so in this instance, the first yellow is bigger than blue, and the second instance, yellow is bigger than blue, and the third instance, yellow is bigger than blue. So we, we have this idea going on right here. So what we see is the following. If the larger sequence, if the corresponding series is convergent, that is if we add up together all of the terms in this sequence, that's gonna be a bigger number than this one. And so before, I guess, let's take one step back. These statements right here tell us the very following thing. We see that the series involving n equals one to infinity of a sub n, the sum of all the terms of the sequence, this has to be greater than or equal to the sum, where n equals one to infinity of the bn's. That is the sum of the larger sequence must be larger than the sum of the smaller sequence. And both of these series have to be greater or equal to zero. And so with that in mind here, so this, this inequality comes immediately from the assumptions we had right here. And so if we assume that the bigger series is convergent, well, since it's positive, right, the only way that this series can be convergent is if it's strictly less than infinity. It's going to be some positive number. Well, if the bigger series is less than infinity, then the smaller series must also be less than infinity. And that actually is going to, that's going to imply convergence of this second series here because it can't go off towards like negative infinity or something like that because it's positive like so. And therefore, the larger series being convergent, being less than infinity, implies convergence of the smaller one. We saw this exact same thing with the integral comparison test. The larger series being convergent implies the smaller one is convergent. But what if we go the other way around? What if we take the smaller series to be divergent? Well, the only way that a positive series can be divergent here uh, is going to basically because it, it actually goes off towards infinity. It adds up to be an infinite value, like so. Because since the sequence is positive, um, the sum, each partial sum, is going to be increasing, increasing, increasing. That, so that's the thing we're using here. Since the sequence is positive, the sequence of the, the sequence of partial sums must be an increasing sequence. And so we're basically using the monotone convergence theorem in this regard. They're bounded below by zero. And in the convergent case, they were bounded above by some finite number. In this case now, uh, the smaller one's divergent, which would imply it has to go off towards infinity. That will force the bigger one to be greater than or equal to infinity. Well, that only leaves one option, it's infinite as well. So thus, it's a divergent series. Remember, if a series equals infinity, that makes it divergent. So when the smaller series diverges, the bigger series must diverge. And when the larger series is convergent, the smaller series must be convergent as well. Identical to what we saw with integrals previously. And you have to make sure that 
you go in the right direction, right? Um, we if if the smaller series was convergent, that says nothing about the bigger series. And if the bigger series was uh, convergent, sorry, if the bigger series was divergent, that says nothing for the smaller series. And also I wanna mention that the numbers n equals one, equal n equals one has really no significance on this situation. Um, if this, if these inequalities are eventually true, if it's eventually true, so after 5,280, if a sub n is greater than or equal to b sub n, which is greater than or equal to zero, then we can make these statements. So don't fixate on the starting value. Um, we just need that this thing will be eventually true in order to apply it. So let's look at some examples of series in this situation. Let's determine the convergence of the following series. Um, take the sum where n equals one to infinity of one over two to the n plus one. Now, one thing you wanna remember when you're working with these comparisons here is that if you have a fraction, right? So you have some fraction a plus b, and you make the denominator, sorry, if you make, let's start with this easier one. If you make the numerator bigger, like you added something to it, a plus c over b, this is gonna make the whole fraction get bigger. Again, this is assuming that c is some positive number. If you make the numerator get bigger, the fraction gets bigger. But on the flip side, if you take a over b, and you add something to the denominator, if the denominator gets bigger, that actually makes the fraction get smaller. So that's the important thing here to remember is that smaller, smaller denominators, this actually means bigger fraction. And the other, the other direction is true as well a bigger denominator actually means a smaller fraction. So that often comes into play when you do these type of comparisons. Because when you look at, when you look at this sequence, one over two to the n plus one, uh, notice that if I were to get rid of the plus one right here, this would look like one over two to the n. That's a geometric sequence. I could determine the convergence of that pretty quickly. And so I kind of want to get rid of this plus one. Now, if I went about doing that, uh, we take the series where n equals one to infinity, like so, if I got rid of the one, one over to the end, notice I'm actually making the denominator get smaller because I'm removing a positive value. And a smaller denominator makes a bigger fraction, just like we talked about. So this second series where we take the plus one out of the denominator is a bigger series. And now we want to mention that this thing is geometric. It's geometric with a constant ratio of one half. We get one half is equal to one. And so that's a, that's, that actually implies that this series right here is convergent. The second series is convergent. And this comes from the geometric series test we had learned about before. Remember, in that situation, a, a geometric series will be convergent if and only if its ratio is small. That is, its absolute value is strictly less than one. So this geometric series right here is convergent. And since it's a bigger convergent series, this plot implies convergence of the smaller series, and this follows from the comparison test. And you should make mention of this. When you write these things up, you should be writing up that, oh, the comparison test says that the, the original series is convergent by comparing it to a bigger convergent series. Um, if we look at the next one here, uh, take the series, n equals 1 to infinity of 5 over 2n squared plus 4n plus 3. Um, so what we can first do is kind of like we did a moment ago, we can get rid of that plus 3, right? That makes the denominator smaller, which makes the fraction bigger. So we get n equals 1 to infinity. We would get 5 over 2n squared plus 4n. So that made it get smaller. Well, that's not, uh, so the smaller denominator I mean, makes the fraction get bigger, makes the series get bigger. That's not quite good enough, right? Because it's still, the, the convergence of this series is a little bit difficult to describe. What if we could get rid of the plus three and the four n? Well, we have to be a little bit careful, right? Getting rid of the plus three, that's definitely gonna shrink it. But if we get rid of the plus four n, does that make the denominator get smaller or bigger? Hmm. Well, it depends on the number n, right? Um, if n was a positive number, then removing it from the denominator would make the denominator get smaller, which makes the fraction get bigger, great. But if n was a negative number, removing it actually makes the denominator get bigger, which makes the fraction get smaller. So we have to be careful about the direction of our inequalities. Now, the good news is we're going from n equals one to infinity. So in that range, notice we're saying n is positive here. And so in particular, that also means that four n is positive. If we remove it from the denominator, 
like from here, that makes the denominator get smaller because we removed a positive quantity. And then now makes the whole fraction get bigger. Therefore, the series will get bigger by removing the 4n. So we do this one more time. You're going to get the sum where n equals 1 to infinity of 5 over 2n squared. If we factor out the 5 over 2, we see that this series, n equals 1 to infinity, this will actually look like a p series, 1 over n squared. Where in this situation, we have a p series. We have a p series where our p value equals 2. Remember that a p series is convergent. It's convergent um, if, the, if the p value is greater than 1, which it is in this situation. So that implies convergence of this series. Now, this series is greater than or larger than another series. So by the comparison test, we get that this series will be convergent as well. So the first series, the, the, this series over here, we got that was convergent by the p-test. This smaller one, we're going to get that it's, com it's uh, convergent by the comparison test. And since this one, this will likewise, since it's bigger than that one, that implies convergence likewise by the comparison test. So the original series is likewise convergent because it's smaller than, um, it's smaller than, convergent series. Now, frankly speaking, when I look at this one right here, I actually cut out the middleman entirely. We don't need the middle series. Honestly, if I was to approach this one, I would just start with this right here. Right? So I actually basically would compare, I would get rid of uh, the 4n plus 3 from the get-go, and then you compare your series to a p-series. This series over here is convergent by the p-test, and then by the comparison test, this series is likewise convergent. Um, what, what is interesting about working with series in chapter 11 of Stewart's textbook here is that the frame of mind is very different than what we did before. In, in, when we talked about these continuous integrals, we focused so much on computation. Compute the antiderivative, compute the antiderivative, compute the antiderivative. With series, we're not as interested in computations anymore. Uh, it's more of a conceptual understanding that we're seeking. Uh, the answer is always going to be convergent or divergent, convergent or divergent. And heck, if you were to guess, you're going to be right half the time on average. But the answer is not actually what we're seeking here. What I want is for, for students to gain this conceptual understanding. It's not on how did you get the answer. It's about why is that the correct answer? It Why is it convergent? And can you provide an argument on why it's convergent? That is what we seek when we talk about these series and such. Uh, let's look at one more example in this video. Let's take the series where n equals one, the sum n equals one to infinity of natural log of k over k. Hmm, what are we gonna do here? Which admittedly, in this series, one actually could use the integral test, right? You could try integrating from one to infinity of the natural log of x over x dx. You could do a u substitution and go from there. That's perfectly acceptable. Uh, but be aware that although we could use the integral test, if we're only interested in finding the convergence of the series, uh, if we're only interested in whether the series is convergent or divergent, we could find that answer using something maybe easier than integral tests, such as the comparison test. So one thing I want to mention is the following is note, if n is greater than or equal to 3, then we see that the natural log, the natural log of uh, n, or in this case k, I'll stick with that. Oh, I used n over here a moment ago. I guess, oh, there's some mismatch I see here. It should be natural log of n over the natural log of n. That's a typo on my part. Sorry, everyone. Uh, note that as n is greater than equal to 3, then the natural log of n will be greater than 1. Um, the issue is that the natural log of 1 is 0. The natural log of 2 is some decimal. It's less than 1. But eventually, remember, eventually, all that matters when, when it comes to the comparison test is it eventually true. Eventually, the natural log of n will be greater than 1. Therefore, eventually, this series, n equals 1 to infinity, will be greater than the series n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. And again, we're kind of fudging this right now. We really should be saying when n equals 3. 
So we should be saying, okay, the series when n equals three to infinity of natural log of n over n will be greater than the series n equals three to infinity of one over n. And now this second series is actually divergent. This is the so-called harmonic series. This is a series we're gonna see all the time, so we just kind of remember it. But we can also see this as a p, uh, by the p-test because your p-value is equal to one. It's the harmonic series. So this one is divergent. And now notice we found a series which is larger than a divergent series. So the comparison test says that this original series is likewise divergent. Now this shows that the series starting at n equals three is divergent, but like we said before, the initial value is not of much significance here. So if these qualities are eventually true, that's all that matters. So since it'll be divergent when you start at three, it'll be divergent when you start as one as well. And so we compare this to harmonic series, and with the harmonic series, which is divergent, and it's smaller than the series in question, we get that it's divergent as well. And so this gives you some examples of how one can use the comparison test to compute convergence or divergence of a series. Now, sort of the general rule of thumb is the comparison test is really good test to use if you, if you can easily compare it to a P series or a geometric series, because those two series are often simplifications of the series we have in question, and they have very simple uh, convergence tests to use. If you compare it to a series which has a difficult convergence test to use, you might as well, as well not have used the comparison test and just try that difficult test on the function to begin with. So those are some tips I want to mention about the comparison test.